All right, it is time for our animation assignment. It is our final compositing project and our final raster only project until assignment nine when we, when we do digital painting. So after this, we learn vectors and we play a lot with other things and integrating them and do text design and logos and all kinds of things. So let's have fun with compositing and let's have fun with found images and our own images and putting them all together. And the way we're gonna do that is with an animated GIF animation or GIF animation which always looks a little choppy, but it's an online animation type that takes up very little memory and can even be used as, a, as an avatar icon on most applications. Now, these are the requirements of it, and you can read through the assignment sheet and see. You need to design your storyboard, which is just kind of like a comic book sketch where you use the same panel size and shape for each image. I want us all to use squares because they're the most compositionally kind of neutral. And I want you to do three on three. So you're going to have nine panels to tell your story. The requirements of your story are that it includes something that you've composited already in the class. That can be your cartoon jumble. That can be your shape exercise. That could be your landscape. That could be your creature. That could be your cloud. It can include one of those things, all of those things, any combination of those things, as long as it includes one thing you've already designed and composited in this class, right? You can also add extra things. So let's look at the storyboard. This, uh, the other requirement is there needs to be a transformation that happens. So that means it's not just a movement test. It doesn't just show your cloud moving across the sky. That is technically animation that brings movement to it but we want a story component. So we want that cloud to change into something else, or we want that cloud's colors to change, or we want the sun to rise and set behind your cloud. That we need a change from beginning, middle to end. So when you're doing your storyboard, think of the first three panels as being the beginning, right? And then think of how that is going to change in some way in the middle, and then what the consequences of that change are in the end. So in this storyboard, you have what's called an establishing shot, where it just shows the setting, but it also introduces a character. And this is just done with really simple stick figures. And then what starts to happen? Well, we have action of this asteroid coming in. And then it makes contact. And then there's a, coll a collision and an explosion. So that's a big transformation, a change in the environment, right? And then it shows the smoking creature, so the consequences of that action. And then um, stuff starts to work backwards and starts to rebuild. And the creature is dazed. And then it resets. This is called set to reset. So that by the end, it's already set to start over, which makes a looping animation. So we are going to do our sketch storyboards. And then at the end of our animation, we will do what's called a refined storyboard where we steal frames from it for your print portfolio to show the story. And you see how that happens, but he's added camera moves into it, like zooms in and zooms out. And now let's look at the animation. So the creature is something he designed, the landscape is something he designed, but this comet is something he just painted with his own pixels, right? And the explosion is something he composited, or I think just painted on his own, right? And just had fun with. So that's one example of transformation. Here's an example where things just get set on fire, right? And so just setting your landscape on fire, that would work as a transformation. And then using the smoke to help set to reset. So you have to kind of think these things through. This actually shows a creature that's gonna be flying. And so the creature changes states from being on the ground to being in the air to being on the ground again. And then added some other little aspects of change like the rain and the cloud cover. And goes background, foreground, background, foreground. So we're gonna learn how to animate your creatures if that's something you wanna do. So on and on and on. So they're clunky, but they should have a transformation. 
should set to reset, should have a story component. And even if they're kind of clumsy in, you know, how much is erased and stuff, they're still entertaining. It can still show you the skills. This requires a lot of layer management and a lot of, of pre-planning, right? So the problem with not doing three on three is it's harder to get a sense of what the big moments are. So for this, the creature just comes onto the, onto the shore and lights something on fire and then leaves laughing. But until you separate it from beginning, middle to end, you don't really get a sense of those different stages. So please sketch them three on three. So in the first stage, it introduces the character onto the setting. Second stage, the eyes start to glow. And the consequences of that is that the city burns and the creature goes away. And then it all works, story-wise. Now, some of these animations will end up being like 100 frames. Some of them might be 20 frames. You'll probably all have more than nine frames in your finished animation. But the key frames, the ones that are in your storyboard, are the ones that actually give you something for the story that's essential. And those will be the first ones we build. And then we'll work on the in-betweens. So think of ways you want to work with something you've already designed. And you'll see past student examples where they've used all kinds of things. Just their creature, or their cloud, or just their setting, or a combination of both. This one is a pretty involved kind of narrative, and I like the different pacing of the movement, right? where the island kind of moves slower than the creature. So we're going to learn how to control all those aspects. But again, your, your storyboard sketch is what matters. And we will start with that. So I'm going to do a storyboard sketch. But my past instructor examples are always a little limited because I always feel like I have to show you a few different skills, right? So I'm going to always. Um, work with my creature in the landscape and do little things to alter both of them. But you can do it with, with anything you've created. So there have been some really good examples. I like so many of them, I keep a lot. But some good examples with just clouds, some good examples with just cartoon jumbles, some good examples with just shapes. So whatever, so this one is just all based on the shape exercise, right? So whatever you're most excited to animate. And this is really the first project that's more for screen presentation than it is for your portfolio. We will have the refined storyboard that's good for your print portfolio. But animations really need to be seen on a screen. This one also just uses the shapes. You know, the transformation of color. All right. So let's get started. What do we need? Well, we need to build assets. And so um, once we build our storyboard, we need to have ideas. And there's three things you need to tell a story. You need a character, you need a setting, and you need the illusion of time passing. The illusion of time passing is going to be given to us by sequential images. And I found this because I was playing with the kind of ink cloud world. I found this GIF animation that just shows ink dissolving in water. And there's a whole bunch of frames. And I might composite in this GIF animation. That's not a requirement, but you are able to composite with other animations, you know, once you understand how to composite within Photoshop. So that might be a fun way for me to alter my background, right? Have it slowly fill with this blue mist. And I can turn this on its side, and I can stretch it, and I can do all kinds of things with it. So with that in mind, that's already going to inform my storyboard a little bit. So I am going to draw in Photoshop, but you guys are just going to draw right in your sketchbook. And I'm going to use my creature in my landscape, and I'm going to change, um, transform the landscape and move my creature and do some interesting things with my creature. Another thing I wanted to use was I wanted my creature to eat a bug. Remember how I said when I designed it that it was um, kind of naturally camouflaged? That was its only defense. 
And so how maybe it hunts prey as it sneaks up and like hides in plain sight and then grabs the, the prey and then maybe its tongue would roll out, that kind of thing. Those are the ways my creature will transform. So I just did a quick Pixabay search for a space bug or an alien bug I think I found. And this will be a great little secondary character. So you can bring in new things for your animation. This will be the bug that my creature eats. And I'll animate this bug just kind of skittering around the rocks. So I'm already starting to pull assets into my Assignment 5 folder. And you guys are, are very welcome to collect them. The nice thing about screen animations is we don't need them to be 4 megapixels anymore. Maybe at most, maybe 1 megapixel is good, but we need them to look good on screen. You know, they need to look good on your computer. That's what we're aiming for. Not full print resolution. So I'm just going to simulate my sketchbook here. And I'm glad I have enough time to show you this properly. Kind of talk you through your storyboard. Um, I'm going to make it 11 wide. This is just to simulate my sketchbook by 14 tall. And so here's my sketchbook. If you have a spiral bound sketchbook, think of this as your spiral. You know, on this side, here's your spiral. So you are going to roughly draw nine squares. Of course, in the computer, I could draw these perfectly, but it's not about drawing them perfectly. This is to capture the energy of your story idea and the experimentation of ideas. So on storyboards, you always leave a lot of gutter space around each panel so that you can write notes, camera actions, and roughly try to design them in a square. I've enforced that in past semesters, sometimes where every finished animation needs to be a square, which honestly just makes the quality a little bit easier to control. And other semesters I've said, but you have to design it in squares, but you don't have to have the actual one be in squares. But what's true of animation, true of storyboarding, is whatever format you choose, it's going to stay that format throughout. So if you're doing kind of a widescreen landscape, it's always going to be that widescreen landscape. Okay, think of the, the first stage. This is how you begin, right? So I'm going to begin with what just looks like a landscape. This is called an establishing shot. This sh shortcut language for that is EST. And the character is already hiding in, in plain sight. So I'm going to say camo character. And I'm going to have my twin sons. There's a rock over here. Right. Okay, now I'm going to create the first action. Not to be confused with act. So an action is when something happens. Right? And that action is going to be to introduce my bug. So I basically have the exact same scene. I'll probably alter the background a little bit, but I can just put that in notes. And then I'm going to introduce my bug off of this corner. So there's my bug. Feel free to use arrows. Lots of notes. There's a tree over here. All right, the bug's going to be going this way. My creature is here, right? Once the bug gets to here, so notice I'm not drawing every panel. I know I'm going to have in-between panels where the bug has to like move along the rocks from the corner. But once he gets here, my creature kind of starts to pop up. So I have action. The bug's going still. But now my creature, which I'll call my character, um, pops up. It hasn't attacked yet. So he's going to pop up. Okay, next is the action for the character. So character action, flicks tongue, or unrolls tongue, I'll figure it out. And so his mouth is going to open, obviously the tongue's going to go, and it's I'm going to make a storyboard where it hasn't actually hit the bug yet, 
right? So you kind of figure out, and that shows me that